Hello YouTube, part two of the character study on our boy anyway. And before I start, I need to say a certain thing. A certain phenomenon happened last time when I made the very first episode of this series. And it's something that I was expecting, but I needed to see with my own eyes to confirm something. And now I know for 100% that it is true. And I will detail that as my very first point. But basically, the video was rated meaning that someone, a certain individual, came with sock accounts, meaning fake accounts that they created themselves, left dislike and left roughly 35 comments, right? All of the dislikes were taken away by YouTube, which tells me that they all came from the same IP address, meaning that their system, their bots, came afterwards and deleted everything that was not organic. The comments, for the most part, remained because they don't really delete comments that come from the same person. But um, now I know for a fact that uh, Bloho actually patrols the internet like a madman and jumps on any video that is actually telling the truth about who he is as a person and tries to intimidate the video maker into deleting it. Because that guy told me that if I didn't delete my video, I would get a strike on my channel, right? Issue is, I know the YouTube guidelines. I know that my video cannot be taken down because all of the content is mine, it's just me filming myself. And you cannot strike a channel if you cannot copyright strike it first. So what was that? It was just a strategy to try and threaten me into just deleting a video myself. It didn't work, of course. But I'm thinking about all of the young content creators that might fall for some of those tactics because they're afraid of losing their channel. And so for them, for the protection of those young souls, I'm going to say something. Jason, I know you watch those videos. I know you watch everything that's made about you obsessively. So we're going to strike a deal. I have enough material to make videos about you every month for the next year. And if you continue to misbehave, I will. Meaning that every single month, starting right now, there was, there's going to be another character study about you dropping. And each and every one of them is going to have more and more ments, more and more of your lies and stuff that people don't even know about you. Because I've dug things that I've never even seen repeated on YouTube, right? It's very easy. If you behave, right? If you don't rate this video, I will wait a month and a half to release that, meaning that there's going to be much less of the frequency of character studies about you on this channel and on YouTube in general. If you don't behave, it's going to be a monthly installment. So think about this. Think about it because I know exactly which of these accounts are yours. So if I see one comment, it's on. I'm going to explain later why even that strategy that you're doing is, is idiotic. I mean. It's expected coming from you. You should understand that when you leave comments, you're boosting the referencement of my videos and that the dislikes you leave don't hurt because they disappear. They get deleted. It doesn't work. You've been on YouTube for so long. How do you not know that? It's basic stuff. And also, and that might be for another episode, you really don't want me to continue posting those videos because eventually, if your strategy that you're trying to pull off right now works, it's all going to be for nothing if there are videos like this floating around. So if I were you, I would behave. Okay, so we're going to start right off the bat. Uh, episode number one was sort of an introduction for people who didn't know who Bloho was. Now we're going to actually jump into the very yummy, yummy stuff because the more the studies advance, the more I'm going to reveal stuff that is insane and that people have never heard about. Right now, we're still going to stay with things that people have su suspected. But my point number one is something that I've suspected for a while, but I didn't have a proof. Now I have a proof. He uses sock accounts and not just one or two. I have a list of 75 accounts used by that guy that he uses to defend himself. And why does he do, do, do that? Because he cannot comment with his actual account. He tries sometimes. Right. If you're lucky enough, you can catch him on some other people's channels. The issue is he immediately gets piled on, people call him out, and he deletes the comment and move on. Have you ever thought about something? His channel has been dying for years. 
he is in desperate need of exposure that he will not get by YouTube. So why does he not do what I do? I grew this channel from the ground up with zero subscribers to what it is today, only with YouTube comments. And it is much more effective if you're actually well known. And you will see that with big channels who sometimes do that when they need more subscriber. So why doesn't he do that? He doesn't because he can't. He is just too infamous. People would immediately just charge him. So what is the other alternative? He makes fake accounts with fake names and he patrols YouTube and defends himself with, with the stock accounts. And the second someone makes a video calling him out and exposing him, he uses the stock accounts to try and scare the person into deleting the video. Or he tries to protect his image and his brand by using the stock accounts. So now that's 100% verified. And I know exactly which of the stock accounts he uses. One, because he reuses them all the time to comment on his own channel and give himself compliments, which is very sad. And they all have very racially charged names for some reason. It's like, I, I know he's stupid, but he, this is pushing it. If you look at the name of the stock accounts, it's like the most stereotypic, stereotypical names you could potentially think of for an ethnicity or nationality. He has no creativity to the point that he cannot even make up a name that is believable. All of his names, you can immediately tell they're fake. And uh, they also never have uh, pictures usually because he's too lazy, so it's just a random account. So that's one. His fans also use stock accounts. So we're going to detail what I mean by fans because he doesn't have any real fans. See, you have to understand one thing with him. He is a constant provider of what we call in this little dark corner of YouTube, ments. What is a ment? A ment is an event, it's a moment in life that is produced by someone that is extremely funny for many reasons. The number one characteristic of a ment is that it's not, uh, it is not an action that is uh, actually willed by the person who produces it. Usually it's something stupid they do and they don't realize it's funny. These people are usually known as lol cows. And these are usually providers of men's, right? Broho is the number one, right? You can tell, you can say that Genova is number two. Yes, if you want. But in fo as far as quality and quantity, especially of men's, Jason is number one. He, he doesn't have an equal. He doesn't have a rival. And the beauty of lol cows is that they don't like being that because they usually take themselves very seriously. They have a very uh, fragile but enlarged sense of ego. So they try and fight it. And as they fight it, they provide more mints. It's the name of the game. But for a lol cow to be able to produce those mints, they need to keep making videos because if they stop, no more fun, right? So you quickly realize that the vast majority of their followers are people who are going to walk towards enticing them. They troll them. They try to keep them going because they want more and more mints. If you remember the channel of Mark Stubing, the Stubes, that's what he was. People were on his channel to make fun of him, that he was a lol cow. He deleted his channel, that's a different story. Genova doesn't make videos anymore either. So now Blaha is the only one left. And that is why the vast majority of people who follow him, follow him for that. He's a clown, he's their little pet experiment. They have fun because he makes them laugh, right? And there's nothing wrong with that per se. I will see that there's some issues with this. But when you see someone defending him, they're not serious. It's a game to keep him going. And the vast majority of these people who on his channel praise him and try to like make sure that his ego gets fed so that he, he continues making stupid videos, they're on my channel making fun of him. So yeah, try and balance that out. But Jason, if you watch this, I know you already know that. No one likes you, right? And the, the very small percentage of people who actually like him are foreigners, so they don't really understand English much. They don't understand what's going on. They don't have the ability to actually research into his past and they barely get what he's saying. So they like him, I guess. A lot of them are actually uh, purchased likes, but it's going to be for a later time. Some of them actually like him, right? I'm not going to say that all of them dislike him and just make fun of him. Some of them actually like him. That portion of people are people who relate. 
Usually there are people who are very black pills. There are people who might not be the best looking. They might not have the best looking body. And therefore, they sort of congregate around that figure of Jason the slug because he sort of looks like them. He sort of, he's not really intelligent. He doesn't have a job. So it's reassuring for them because he has one thing that they consider to be worthwhile, which is strength. We're going to see that that strength is also a fabrication. But they have something to strive for now. And it's something that is low standard, standard enough that it's not too, uh, it's too, not intimidating enough. Meaning that it, it's not going to be a goal so high that they're going to have to actually put some efforts into it or they might fail. Because when you try to become Hemingway, you've succeeded already because you're already better than him. So you're shooting not for the stars, but you're shooting for a mole somewhere in the ground, right? It's not going to be a tough moment. You're not going to be let down. That's the beauty of it. That's why they like him so much because they relate. They understand what he's coming, uh, what, what he's actually going through. They understand his mediocrity and they are mediocre themselves. So that's why there's this kinship. And uh, usually you can recognize these people because they defend him tough and nails on the internet when someone makes fun of uh, their hero, but they never have a public page. You can never see them do any lift. And the reason why is because they don't even lift for the most part. So that is his community, right? That's what it's made of. of. And you're going to see that it's very important for the rest. But we're going to now talk about Lane Norton. Right. So the Lane Norton incident was highly documented on YouTube by many people who exposed Jason. A lot of things were uh, discussed about it. There are entire videos made by Lane discussing what happened. So basically what happened was Jason did his little LARP when he was exposing fake natties, uh, which in reality was just a way to get clout. And uh, that's a strategy that people still follow to this day. You still have channels that built the entirety of their following on fake Nighty videos. Those people all have in common that they usually don't even lift. And a lot of what they do is through envy and jealousy. I'm not protecting fake Nighty's. Fake Nighty's should be exposed. But where, where is that coming from? Why, why are you doing this? If it's coming from a place of trying to protect young lifters, and make sure that they don't fall into the same traps and it's fine. But a lot of the time it's not that. A lot of the time it's just, it's resentment towards those people because they're actually successful, because they're frauds. But, you know, for your own sake, you shouldn't fall into that pit of hatred for nothing. You should have a goal. So he, uh, Blowhope, tried to expose Lane for apparently being on steroids. Now, was he on steroids? I don't know and I don't care. The issue is the way it was done because uh, he did that and he got an, a response because Norton has a PhD, he wanted to protect his image. And so what did uh, Jason do? He actually told his community to go and harass him. And he made multiple videos that are still online today where he very clearly had sort of a warrior's mindset. Those are the videos where he was wearing that weird dress, like that, that red dress. It's not safe for work. He was wearing a, a, like a, 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 ca a Spartan uh, hat, helmet. Very, very cringe. Be careful if you watch those videos. But basically, he encouraged the uh, most disgusting portion of his community to go and harass Lane. And so these people did it because it's the internet and no one is there to punch them in the face. So they went and they did it and they harassed him. And the issue with that is that not only did they arrest the man who didn't ask for anything, they also arrest his family. And his family was comprised of his wife, who was pregnant and uh, who received daily death, threat, death threats from these people. That's not acceptable. See, uh, from all of the fans and the, the nut huggers of that guy who defend him and say he did nothing wrong in the past, and they say that he apologized, he never apologized for that. There are proofs that he sent those messages. He keeps claiming he didn't, but he never apologized and he was responsible for the suffering of these people. That's the reason why I make these videos. You need to understand that if you want to keep following and protecting that guy, that's the type of individual you're protecting, right? He's a piece of garbage, right? Keep that in mind when you keep doing your thing. And also 
the entire basis of the argument of uh, of Bloho to attack Lane was some sort of paper that Lane made about protein absorption and Bloho was saying it was a way to sell his products. The entire thing was based on nothing. It was based on Google research. So he didn't even do his homework before making his Natty or Not video. He created a lot of suffering and, because that's not all, when he eventually got sued because he did get sued, he lost in court because he didn't show up. He, he's such a scary cat that he couldn't even face some old judge and a lawyer. He didn't have a lawyer to represent him. He represented himself, which for anyone who knows anything is usually a sign of an incoming disaster. People who want to represent themselves usually have a, an immensely inflated sense of self and they think they're more competent than they actually are. And when they end up in front of the court, they melt down. It's usually pretty funny to see. So he showed up, he was, uh, he didn't, sorry, my bad. He was supposed to represent himself, meaning that no lawyer showed up for him. He didn't show up himself. That was confirmed by the judge. The judge said, Polly didn't show up, all right? He was fine, he was found guilty. He lost the trial and he had to flee the country because he was going to get deported. He was in the UK at the time and countries usually don't like it too much when immigrants cause trouble on their land, usually get deported immediately. So he fled back to the US and what happened was this. He made videos stating that not only did he show up to the trial, he actually had a good laugh with the lawyer, with Lane's lawyer. Uh, they discussed how much money the lawyer was taking from Lane for something uh, that wasn't going to result in anything. He apparently told the lawyer that he moved all of his funds to a secret bank account. He, all of that to make himself look good, right? In his mind, he showed up in court with like glasses and flip flops. He like he high fived the judge. They had a good time, and then he left. He claimed that the reason why he didn't have to pay anything when he lost the when he lost the lawsuit was because a all of his assets were moved beforehand which again anyone who knows anything knows that that's not how it works we have forensic accountants that can track your money right that's the reason why you have people who get caught for financial uh, evasion all the time is because we can track those things and if you wait two days before your actual trial to do that Guess what? It's not even going to go through. It's going to get blocked. So that doesn't stand. And he also claimed that the reason why they couldn't touch his money was because it was a sealed agreement between him and the American government, meaning that it was a pension that couldn't be touched. Yeah, it was. That's actually true. Uh, only issue is that Bloho said that it was because he was an ex-military. He was a mercenary. Reality is it was because it's welfare. That's welfare money. It's disability money. And you cannot touch a disability check. That's why he had nothing. He had no assets. He had no liquid assets. He, the only thing he got was a check from the government every month. And this is the reason why Lane got zero dollars from that. And that is a hundred percent just certified, proven. You still have official documents if you want to go check it out that he basically is completely destitute and to this day he still is and that's going to be very interesting because that's not the image that he presents uh, presents of himself so that's the entire lane northern situation poor lane spent tens of thousands of dollars and he got nothing back but at least he sort of managed to quell bloho for a little while and uh, he, he cleared up his image blah 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 whether he liked the guy or not actually he went through with it but he never managed to undo all of the damage that was done to his family, right? Because Bloho never apologized. So for everyone who says, oh, he, he accepted his, his mistakes in the past. No, he didn't. He even never apologized for the fake mercenary stuff. He still to these days, sometimes like every six months. Oh, that's funny too. I forgot to mention that. A week after I posted my video uh, exposing him, he made a video about the fake mercenary stuff and he sort of made another apology. He made one, he already made two. That was the third one. And they're all like 20 minutes long. 
so I guess that my video really shook him because he really wanted to defend his name afterwards. First off, every time he does that and he does an apology video, he only mentions the fake mercenary stuff. He never mentions all of the, the rest that you can go check out, all of the lies, all of the, the deception. And he never even admits that he did something wrong because his excuse was, I was just trolling, guys. You should have known I was trolling. How? He would, Jason, you were going after channels, deleting channels. You, were, you, you swore on your mother's grave that you were a mercenary. How were people supposed to know it was a joke? We both know it wasn't. You got caught because you're a terrible liar and you have 40 IQ. So, we're going to keep going. So that was the Lane Norton thing for people who were wondering what happened back then. This is what happened. We're going to get into the strength because a lot of people will tell me, well, you're just talking about his lies, but you're not talking about his expertise, right? Some people will tell me, oh, I don't care that he did all of these terrible things. At least he gives good advice. He doesn't. His advice is garbage. For bodybuilding, for powerlifting, for any intent and purposes, it is trash. Don't listen to him. And I'm going to give you proof. So he spent years trashing bands, trashing uh, chains, saying they didn't work, saying it was used to hide someone's strength. He made a living out of attacking Alpha Destiny. Every time the guy posted a lift with chains or bands, he would make fun of it. He would say, oh, it's not raw, so it doesn't count. Guess, guess what he's doing now? He's using them. You know why? Because he was actually sort of correct in a sense. You can definitely use those implements to hide your real strength if you do it in a certain way. And how are you supposed to do it? Well, it's very simple. See, if you use straight weights and you, you just stop progressing, then people are going to point it out and say, hey, you're stalling, your programming is not on point, you're not making progress. But if you use bands and chains, you can add weight to the bar and say, oh, no, no, but you see, the bands add 40 pounds or the chains add 70 pounds, right? So that way you are creating what I call an artificial progression. On camera, it looks like you're progressing, but you're really not. And if you look at, uh, at Blahino's progression on something like the bench, he hasn't progressed. He still has three plates. He still regularly fails three plates on a raw bench. But somehow his bench is supposed to be like 350 because he uses bands. That's not how it works. Bands and chains are applications that need to be tested within the parameters of powerlifting, which are raw. You, you think Julius Maddox is going to show up to his world record and put 700 on the bar and then slap chains and say, don't worry, bro, it's 800 at the top. It doesn't work like that. You're supposed to show your strength with straight weight, which when he does, shows no results. So keep that in mind when you say that, oh, he knows what he's doing. No, he's really good, and I say, I mean, good at deception, but you, if you check his videos, he doesn't even know how to put the chains right, right? They don't even at any point touch the floor or they hang in a way that the ratio is not high enough to create any difference. So what is the point? There is no point. It's just smoke and mirrors, just like Nether Beast. And those two have a lot in common. The frauds usually use the same type of lie patterns and manipulation tactics. It's insane the amount of parallelism that I managed to create between the two. We're going to get into a topic that is highly discussed among people who don't like Bloho, but is never really explained in terms that can actually get through the soft heads of his fanboys. So, people say he uses fake plates, all right? Does he use fake plates? In my opinion, yes, he does, all right? What type of fake plates does he use? Well, there are multiple different theories surrounding that. The first theory is he uses technical plates. You will have noticed that when he does a deadlift, for example, he uses bumper plates, red bumper plates that are fairly thick. Those bumper plates are usually 45 pounds. Um, if I am not mistaken, they might even be 55 pounds. But there also exists something called a technical plate, which is 2.5 pounds, which is the same thickness and is pretty much the same look as a 55 pound plate. And if you put it, if you sandwich it between two other plates, you cannot see the sign on the side that says 2.5. So it looks like a 55 pound plate. 
The issue with that theory is a lot of people say that the technical plates don't have the same color. That's possible. I don't have them in front of me, so I cannot know for a fact. Why do I still believe that this theory is very, very highly uh, potentially true? Because it's Blow who we're talking about. We're talking about a guy that lies about not being bold. We're talking about, about a guy that lied about being a male model when he looks like a decaying corpse. So what incentive do we have to believe him? People who lie a lot don't get the benefit of the doubt, right? Because they lied too much. It's the boy who cried wolf. So the only way I would ever believe that those deadlifts that he's doing in his uh, home are legit is if he weighted the plates in on camera with no cut, put them on the bar, and then did the, did the deadlifts. Then I would believe it. But for now, I'm pretty sure he's only deadlifting 400 pounds. Like, that's my headcanon theory. And the thing too is, with Jason, Jason has a tendency to jump on any opportunity he has to prove when he's right. So for example, when people say that he never graduated high school, he made five Facebook posts post posing with his uh, diploma. When people said that he was uh, not the weight he was claiming, he, he weighted himself, which by the way, he could have faked because he was just filming the weight. So if you believe that, then I don't know, you, you must likely also believe in the tooth fairy because it's very easy to manipulate your weight with an electrical balance like this, a scale, sorry. But in this situation here, because he's lied so much in the past, I personally don't believe it until I see video proofs. That's that. And as far as the fake plates go, there are other plates in his little thing that really don't make sense. They don't look right. And also coming from someone who apparently bought only calibrated plates from Rogue, he has some sets that are not from Rogue that are color coded with strange colors like black, which usually are not used by Rogue and you can't really tell what they are. And he passes them out as 45s, of course, the highest possible weight, but they could be fives, they could be tens. You don't know, until he weights them, you don't know. And so for someone who is so hungry for content, you would think that he would do a video of actually weighting his plates. It's been two years, he's always refused. So he uses fake plates. And as far as the line goes, he lies about his weight. Now. The weight in itself is not terrible. The, the issue is the body fat thing. Right? I sort of talked about that in the first part. He is not 17% uh, body fat. I am 17% body fat, right? 17% body fat, you don't look like the Michelin man. He is still technically obese, all right? And as far as the loose skin excuse, loose skin is empty. It's like an empty sack. It's not full of fat. If it's full of fat, it's not, it's not loose skin, it's just fat rolls. That's what they're named. And that's what he has. He is fat. He has fat rolls, he has gigantic love handles, he has, his quads are covered in fat, the upper back as well. He is at a bare minimum 25% body fat. And the issue with the lying about the body fat is, he's 220 at 5'7". Try and picture in your head someone 220 at 5'7", who would be 17% body fat. That person would be a tank, right? Look at the 220 power, uh, uh, class in powerlifting. Look at the guys who are 5'7". They're monstrous. Look at him. Does it make sense? Does it compute that he has all of that lean mass? Where does he hide it? He has no shoulders, no arms. He has no calves. All of his mass is fat in his legs and some in the upper back. That doesn't justify that weight. The lean mass that he proposes he has is completely false. And he has a history of doing that, of miscalculating, miscalculating his FFMI. That's where the famous video about him being as big as Serge Nubre comes from. It's because he refuses to admit that he's just a fat man. I knew it. I knew that uh, this series was going to be... Uh, Tens, tens of episodes, yeah. I, I for sure have enough material for an episode each month. So, now that we've discussed the strength, I have many more examples of him not understanding programming and going to come later. We're going to get back into the claims. He claimed that John Blaha was his cousin. If I'm not mistaken, John Blaha is an astronaut. They have no blood connection. I couldn't find anything. 
So that, to my, in my opinion, is a lie, unless he can prove it, but he, he won't. He claimed that he had an, a family in the NFL. That is actually true. I think he has uh, someone who is connected to him who plays, uh, who was a coach, I think, and who played at some, at some point. So I, I say that why? I say that because he has a tendency to associate himself with people who he perceives to be quite advanced in society, people who have a high status. And why is that important? It's important for the psychological um, deciphering of Blahino. Many people tell many things. They say he's autistic. They say he might be a psychopath, a sociopath. I disagree with all of them. For me, he is what is called a vulnerable narcissist. And I will keep expanding on that. But basically, narcissism is quite well understood by most people. Most people don't realize that we are all narcissists to a point or the other and it can actually be healthy. But it becomes a personality disorder when it falls into two categories, one of which is vulnerable narcissism. And usually these people are people who have a very weak sense of ego, they're not really confident at all, and their goal in life is to present themselves as more glorious than they actually are. And those people have a tendency to try and associate themselves with as many high status individuals as they can because they see it as they themselves being important. And I did say that I, would, I wouldn't mention uh, people in his family that he hadn't bring forth himself. So we're going to talk about his dad. He claimed for a while that his dad, that I'm not going to name, and I would, I, I would ask you to not name him in the comment either, he claimed that his dad was a millionaire, right? He claimed that his dad was a green beret, he was that badass. All of that, why? To make himself look better, to make himself look like he's received an education from a top military man, and that he was set to receive a lot of money. And I do think that he is set to receive something, but I think that something is going to be a steel pipe at the back of the head seconds before his dad passes out. Because I highly doubt that he's going to be receiving any inheritance at all because the entirety of his family cut him off, right? They shut down any contact with him. And you need to think about how bad of a person you need to be for your family to stop talking to, to you, basically. I know people, like you, you have people in jail and prison who kill people and their family still visits them. So how toxic do you need to be for your own blood to say enough, we don't want to see you anymore? You need to be quite bad. So the name dropping is constant, of course. You will notice that he does that with other YouTubers as well. He tries to associate himself with certain names. You will also notice that those YouTubers never mention him. And if they do, it's to make fun of him. He is the butt of the joke on this YouTube fitness thing, right? He is completely shunned by every single individual. People who know what they're talking about, people who don't know what they're talking about, no one wants to associate with him. And usually the few people who name drop him and who say anything remotely positive about him, they're either, what I spoke about at first, they're trolling, meaning that they're trying to establish a connection with him to make fun of him in the long run, or they don't know it better, meaning that they haven't done their research. And it happened with uh, Bugenhagen, for example, Bugenhagen sort of started commenting on his page a while back and his fans immediately jumped in and were like, Rick, you don't know what you're getting into. That guy's a piece of trash. Don't talk to him. And he stopped, right? But people still fall into the traps and Blaha still himself associates his name with others without their knowing, without their approval or anything because he's desperate for that connection that he cannot get. Uh, I don't know how deep we are in the video right now. I was expecting to finish this. Ah, we might have to stop here. Let's do one more. So, and that, that is again an insane lie that proves that the guy is completely unhinged and shouldn't be believed. He claimed for the longest time that he was lactose intolerant, right? Which means you cannot consume lactose product because it gives you the shits. After that, so after years of claiming to be lactose intolerant, he jumped on go mad. How do you reconcile being lactose intolerant and then drinking a gallon of milk a day? How is that possible? He claimed, because he's an idiot, that the milk in the UK is not the same as the milk in the US. Well, they both have lactose. So if you, if you go from not being able to have a glass of UK milk to drinking a gallon of milk in the US, it's a scientific impossibility. 
And also, you would think that someone who lies so much would, would get eventually good at it and would be able to plan. But uh, something you will notice with people who are lacking in intellectual abilities is they don't have the power to project themselves in the future. So for someone like Blahino, he lies and he, he doesn't forget his lies. He just doesn't understand how much he's putting himself in a pickle when he tells them. Because after that, when he contradicts himself, it's like it never even happened. It's like the two don't really connect in his mind. He doesn't realize that the two statements don't, don't go hand in hand. That is insane. And the fact that people follow someone like him and take advice from him tells you a lot about the intellectual abilities of these people. It's quite sad. So that's that thing where he was apparently like his intolerant. Uh, he, and also he promoted Gomad. Gomad is awful, right? I said, it, I said it before, I said it again. Even for people who need to gain weight, there are better ways to get calories. Drinking a gallon of milk a day is idiotic. Please don't do that. Uh, and same thing with the switcheroo thing. He used to be a vegan and now he's not anymore. And the issue with that also is people can change. I'm not saying people cannot change. But when you spend a year on your YouTube channel trying to guilt trip people into going vegan, he had a video where he almost cried talking about his friend, the cow, that was getting, getting slaughtered and he was so sad and therefore he went vegan. And then after that, you completely turn the tables and you become that weird Texan redneck persona that you, I only eat red meat and vegans are, they are not men. How do you compute that? That's not normal. That's a personality disorder. You realize that, right? And for all of the people, and there are my camera in men's, there are my fellow trolls, but understand also that what you're doing to that guy, when you, you fake support him and you try and keep him going, I guess, I understand he makes you laugh, understand that it's not super kind to him, right? Because he is, he is he's not right in the head. And the issue is that at this point, it's too late to save him, I think. But you're adding to his misery because vulnerable narcissists are very sad. Their life is full of sorrow because they can never be happy with who they are. And they need the approval of others. And the approval that they get is troll. So I, I, I want to say that to make you understand that while I do think that the guy should not be giving advice and he should really, you know, lose what he's built, I think it's for his own good. I don't think this is good for him. And I'll talk about the financial uh, repercussions of this too, because he doesn't really make money off of the, off of the YouTube account and the coaching. So the, the entire thing of this is a way for him to get attention that he doesn't get in real life. But the type of attention he's getting is toxic. So if you're that type of person who trolls him for ments, understand that he's produced enough ments. And they're all on video, they're all uh, archived. You have enough men's for the rest of your life, right? And the type of men's he's been producing lately are fairly sad. And for the fans, you yourself need treatment and help because you're following someone like this. But try and understand that by trying to get Bloho to realize his mistakes, which I know he will never do, I'm trying to get you to realize yours. Because even though he cannot be saved, the people who follow him can. So we're going to stop here, but yeah. For the vegan thing, basically he was forced into a vegan diet by his ex-wife and he didn't have a choice. And the second he was free, he went back to uh, eating meat immediately. And apparently all of that he said before with the ethics of veganism, all of that was a lie, but that's not a surprise. And now he's ha he has his whole persona around being a Texan. I mean, you know, you're supposed to eat meat and blah, blah, blah. So that's, you know, sign of personality disorder he's switching his identity all the time because he's trying to find the one identity that people are going to accept him for that is going to get him the most attention the issue is that deep to his core the vulnerability is still going to be there and people can sense that and blahino is that he's a, he's a very vulnerable uh, person and he should just accept that seek treatment but of course he doesn't and therefore this is why this video needs to keep happening because i need people to understand that he is not one to follow. And also we're having some fun here. I'm talking about uh, some of his uh, past men's because they need to be archived, right? So uh, Jason, if you watch this whole video, 
keep in mind the little deal that we have. If you, uh, if you behave, if you're nice, uh, if you actually work on yourself and your anger, you will have a month and a half to recover from this video before the next one drops. And if you don't, it will be next month. So, you know, watch out. And for the people who watched, everything is timestamped, so it should be easy for you to find what you're looking for. Have a good day.